Formula One, the pinnacle of motorsport, where 20 drivers, 10 teams, oh, I know, that's all right, nine teams tour the world accompanied by a circus show to try to become the best of the best and become world drivers and constructors champions. But what if I told you there was one more formula above that one? F Zero. Releasing all the way back in 1990, it's a racing game that quickly blossomed into a successful series of games, with its very last game being F Zero Climax for the Game Boy Advance in 2004, with its last mainline release being one year earlier with F Zero GX, and at one point reaching global sales figures of 5.8 million copies sold. So, with sales figures like that, you figure the series will still be going strong today, right? Nah, the series is as good as dead. So what happened to it? How does a staple from Nintendo's lineup go from a mainstay to being forgotten? Well, well, let's see. The first F-Zero game, called F-Zero, released in 1990 for the SNES in Japan. Us here in America had to wait another year. It's still decent nowadays, but back then when most racing games looked like this, F-Zero came out and hit everyone with this. 3D Racing Well, 3D-esque racing. We don't think anything of it now, but back then this was pretty revolutionary. The effect was achieved by utilizing something in the SNES called Mode 7. You might have heard of it. Might not have. It's very underground. Basically, it allows backgrounds or images to spin and stretch to make it seem like a moving image. That's what's going on here, basically. And being set in the future, F-Zero cars don't have any tires and are very angled and circular in their designs. This is because Kazunobu Shimizu, one of the designers, was watching Tim Burton's Batman. He saw the Batwing and thought, wow, that looks cool, I should do something like that. So he removed the wheels and made them float. And yeah, they look pretty realistic. They actually look like the Red Bull X2010. So going into the first F-Zero game, it's still a pretty fun game. The only problem being it's it's on the SNES, and by that I mean all the tracks are flat, which means no elevation changes, and they're not really that complex either, but despite this, they still manage to be, they seem pretty different from each other. And there's only four cars to choose from though, but there's also not really much else to do, because besides the normal Grand Prix mode, there's practice mode, and that's it, but the game is also pretty hard. The later tracks have some pretty sharp turns, hard braking zones, and you really need to lift off the throttle and press the brake button to make some of these turns without bumping into the other racers or the barrier, especially when you have a health bar. And also you have a boost function, but it's tied directly with your car's energy, so use it too much and you'll destroy or wreck the car, but you can always drive over these things to fill the gauge, so it's kind of like a racing sim, but not really. You have three leagues, which each have their own tracks and track layouts. The AI can also be pretty fast and aggressive, but overall, F-Zero is still a pretty fun game, and it ended up selling around 2.85 million copies, so with sales figure like that, you bet Nintendo greenlit a sequel 7-8 years later on the N64 called F-Zero X, X for 2 freaking extreme. Where the first one was flat and had no elevation changes, F Zero X has all the elevation changes up, down, left, right, upside down, in the air. It's pretty hectic, especially with 30 cars on the track. You're bound to play a quick game of bumper cars now and then because the handling can be pretty sensitive. The tracks from the previous game return, along with new ones, but this time they come with metal. The soundtrack for F-Zero X is definitely goes the hardest in the series, it even has death metal. You would never hear that in a Nintendo game. Big Blue, Mute City, Devil's Call in Your Heart, Dream Taser, the high title theme, these are just really good. Especially Big Blue and Mute City. The music really elevates F-Zero and really adds to the atmosphere, but I can't really discern the tracks from each other. All I know, Big Blue, you go upside down and race what it looks like on a pipe, so it looks like it's kind of like a roller coaster. And also, this is the F-Zero game that allows you to kind of change your setup. You can either go for more downforce, which allows you to accelerate faster at the cost of top speed, 
or add less downforce, which allows you to have a higher top speed at the cost of acceleration. Also, each car has their own stats, where one could have better boost power and lower handling, while the other could have better top speed, but lower boost. You know, stuff like that. It's not the deepest, but it's still cool to have. F-Zero X, it's still really fun, and it managed to sell 1.10 million copies, but it could be pretty tough, especially later on. And it also has more tracks compared to the previous F-Zero, which is always good. And despite selling 1 million less than its predecessor, it got a sequel 3 years later. F-Zero Maximum Velocity. Basically the original F-Zero, but on GameCube. It sold 1 million copies. Moving on. F-Zero GX, the last mainline F-Zero game. It released on the GameCube and is easily the best F-Zero game. It's the one that looks and handles the best. It even has a story mode, a first for F-Zero. I didn't get to play a lot of the story because you actually have to unlock the missions with credits, but from what I've seen, uh, I, I don't know what to say. It seems a bit all over the place. Other than that, it's more F-Zero, but better. The soundtrack here is more technical and electrical this time, which actually fits the tone of the game pretty good. This was the F-Zero game I had the most fun with, and it keeps the tuning from F-Zero X, but now you can unlock certain parts through either playing the game to upgrade the car, or by doing stuff in the story, or winning a certain amount of races and wins. Stuff like tires, wings to improve the arrow, it's really cool and is definitely what an F-Zero game needs. F-Zero GX is also the only game in the series to have widescreen support. So with that, it looks pretty good and a little bit modern. Impressive, considering that this was in 2003 and on the GameCube. Unfortunately, F-Zero X only sold about 690,000 copies, but considering it was on the GameCube, a console that almost nobody bought, it's not really that bad. So that was the last mainline F-Zero game, with the next two releasing on the Game Boy and well, they didn't really sell that good, but that was all the way back in 2004. That was 19 years ago. And since then, the Wii, Wii U, DS, 3DS, and Switch have all been released. And well, F-Zero, it's missed out on all of that. Besides Virtual Console, it didn't get anything on those consoles. It's been lying dormant ever since and is now relegated to Smash Bros and Mario Kart 8 appearances. Mario Kart 8 is the only racing action F-Zero has gotten, with Blue Falcon, Big Blue, and Mute City being in it, and also being able to get a Captain F Falcon meet outfit, but that's about it. Captain Falcon is basically just a Smash Bros character now. The thing he's known for, a Falcon Punch and Falcon Kick, only exists because of Smash Bros. Speaking of Captain Falcon, he's a jack of all trades. He's a racer, an F-Zero champion, and in GX, he's a bounty hunter. What can't he do? And then you have his evil clone, Blood Falcon. But I'm not too familiar with the lore and mythos of F-Zero, but it's pretty crazy from what you expect to be in a racing game. Ranging from crime, cloning, murder. There's also even a comic that came with the original F-Zero explaining the background and history of the story. It's also where Captain Falcon makes his first appearance. Yeah, I didn't know this existed until recently, but it's really cool and filled with that 80s and early 90s Nintendo art style. I should know, I have a Nintendo Power Poster in my room. So with all of that, where did it go wrong? It had the gameplay, the music, the best one being in my opinion, probably has to go to Big Blue. I don't know, it goes back and forth between Big Blue and Mute City. They're both pretty good, but I actually don't know how to play them on guitar. But everyone always points to those two when talking about F-Zero music. But if we look at the sales charts, sales went down with every release, but that's not the reason why actually. Someone actually asked Nintendo, and they said the reason they haven't done anything new for F-Zero is because they haven't came up with any new ideas for it. Keep in mind, this is the same company that essentially released the same game four times in a span of six years, while two came out within six months of each other, and one was re-released on the Switch. And if the best they can come up with in 19 years is F-099, I, I just don't think Nintendo really 
cares about F0 anymore. They haven't even thought of at least porting over F0 GX, or at least just making your standard basic F0 game. According to some though, Nintendo was apparently working with Criterion, the developers of Burnout, to release an F0 game on the Wii U. That was false, but F0 desperately needs to make a comeback for sure. If they can't come up with an idea for it, how about this Nintendo? F0 Burnout. How cool would it be to have an open world F0 game or just an event to event game like Burnout 3 where you could wreck the other cars and make them crash at 600 miles per hour? That would actually be pretty fun, but it's probably never gonna happen. Which is a big shame because a series like F0 doesn't deserve to be stuck on the shelf, so hear me out. I pledge to make a new F0 game a reality.